I have been tutoring on OutSchool for a little over a year. Now, in today's video, I'm going to share with you what I've learned about tutoring on OutSchool throughout this first year. I'm going to share with you three things I recommend you do as an OutSchool tutoring teacher and three things I recommend you do not do as an OutSchool teacher. But before we begin, hello everyone, my name is Alejandro Landano and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I share lots of different videos helping others become online teachers as well as reach their own personal income goals. As I mentioned in today's video, I'm sharing my three do's and three don'ts when tutoring online without school. Okay, so the first thing I highly recommend you do if you are tutoring on out school is to create personalized lessons. And I have a few reasons why I think this is a great tip, especially for newer online teachers. Now, if you are tutoring on out school, I've seen in multiple emails that out school parents are looking for out school teachers who can tailor to their specific students needs. For example, I receive messages on a regular basis, parents reaching out asking, oh, do you help students with phonics skills? Can you specifically help my student get more fluent with addition and subtraction? Can you help my student practice telling time? Now, lots of parents reach out to me asking for a specific skill. And if I didn't have that personalized lesson planning approach, I would have to turn back all of these students since I already had a pre-made curriculum. So I highly recommend if you are especially those of you that are just starting to tutor on out school, I highly recommend that you personalize those tutoring lessons. Now I want to transition to the first don't, something I do not recommend you do as an out school teacher. Now, as you saw, my first tip was to create personalized lessons, but this does not mean that you want to create a bunch of resources that you're never going to use again. As an out school teacher, you want to do your best to stay organized and create resources that you can use with students time and time and time again. Now, I will give you a quick example. I teach lots of kindergarten level students on OutSchool and I have created lots of different activities, presentations and games for students needing to work on CVC words. So I have a folder with tons of different activities, whether we're practicing reading the words, we're practice writing the words, we're matching the words, we're playing a game with the words. I have folders for all those activities. And then based on the student's level, I can pick and choose some of the previous activities I've already created. Therefore, just to reiterate, the first don't or the first thing I do not recommend you do as an online out school tutor is to create lessons that you can only use one time. To really try to look at the big picture and think about Will I try to attract students that want the same skill in the future? Or is this something that might not be worth my time? Now, this is something that I did not do from the start and I kind of wish I would have. But recently, since I started my TPT store, woohoo, for Teachers Pay Teachers, um, I've been doing a better job at organizing the resources I currently have so I can use those same resources again and again with new students and then students I've had for a longer period of time. Now, the second thing I recommend you do when tutoring on our school is to charge your worth. Now, I know that it is up to you. This is a platform. It's a marketplace, really. And since it's a marketplace, no one can tell you what to price your classes. But you do want to make sure that when you're listing your classes, you're not making them too cheap and it's still worth your time. So I like to think of it for my tutoring classes. 
I spend 30 minutes one-on-one -on -one with the actual student and generally I spend anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes creating, just personalizing that out school lesson plan. Therefore, the most I'm ever working on a one student during the week is less than an hour. And currently, I'm charging $40 per 30 minutes on OutSchool. And when OutSchool takes their 30%, I get $20 in my pocket. Now, even if I spend that entire hour, which is highly unlikely right now, I'm still making $28, which for my personal income goals is still pretty good. So again, it is definitely a personal decision. You need to sit back and reflect on what your own personal income goals may be and how much you feel like you're worth as an online educator. But I highly recommend that you charge your worth. You want to be at least making a certain amount per hour and take into account the time you're working with the student, the time you're creating lessons, responding to messages, etc. Now, the second thing I do not recommend out school tutoring teachers to do is to offer tons of free classes. Now, do I think free classes and using coupons have a place? Of course. So this does not mean you can't use coupons and discounts. I know for me in the past, something I used to do with my one-time classes is I would offer students 50% off their second class with me. And that's definitely something you could do to try to attract students in the beginning, but just be careful with it and have an intention kind of for why you're providing discount or why you want to provide a free class. If you're offering tons of free, cheap classes, you may be reaching parents and students that are not really dedicated to, for example, your class. If parents are willing to pay $40, $50, $60 a week to work with you, you know they're invested. Versus if a student is just paying $5, $10, $15 to work with you, the parent may not take your class as seriously. So keep those things in mind. Free classes and coupons have a place, but don't overdo it specifically when you're tutoring on out school. Okay, the third tip or thing I've learned as an online out school teacher or tutor is to niche down just a bit, even with your tutoring listing. So I talk a lot on my channel about tutoring and if you've been following along my journey for a while, you know I love K1 and 2. Now I have an elementary education degree, so I can teach three, four, five, six, and I can even do K through 12 reading and writing, but I don't want to do everything. I can't do everything and that is okay. I mean, my tutoring listing right now could even be more niche down if I'm gonna be honest, but it's been working really well for me. In my listing, I have that I can work with kindergarten, first grade and second grade students on either reading, writing, math or science because those are the topics I really enjoy and that's the students I want to attract and I really just enjoy working with. So niche down, when you're tutoring on OutSchool. And this will actually help you with that first thing I discussed in this video. If you niche down, you can easily start to create a resource library for yourself. So then it's easier for you to personalize future student lessons. So my third don't for tutoring on OutSchool then is to not try and tutor everything. Now, I don't have experience with homework help and I feel like a lot of teachers have asked me about that so I can't really give too much information if I recommend you have a listing on homework assistance. If you've ever done something like that, please let me know in the comments. But I really recommend you niche down and do not try to talk 
to every single student on OutSchool. If you are trying to reach every single student, you're probably going to reach no students. So do your best to be seen as an expert in a specific niche or skill instead of trying to do all the things. This does not mean that you can't branch out. For example, I could have just started very niche down focusing on kindergarten phonics. I could have then branched out by doing kindergarten math kindergarten science, and then maybe first grade writing, first grade math. I could have done it that way. And again, that's not to say that you can't branch out a little bit, but don't try to do all of the things. You will overwhelm yourself and you will more than likely not find much success. Well, those are the three, really six, but it's the three main lessons I've learned while tutoring on OutSchool. If you haven't already, I highly recommend you check out my Facebook group. In that Facebook group, I leave it open for you to ask any questions you have about tutoring, for you to post your listing, or for you to just get ideas and resources for your own online tutoring classes. Now, I have many, many different videos on my YouTube channel focusing on tutoring on OutSchool. If you haven't been following around for a while and you are not tutoring on OutSchool, I do not know what you're waiting for. Watch some of my other videos that talk about how I have found a lot of success tutoring on OutSchool. That is actually my most reliable source of income right now, and it's where I have found the most success teaching online. Now, if you have any questions about tutoring on OutSchool or online teaching, always feel free to either leave comments or questions in the comments down below, or even send me an email where I can try to answer any questions you may have. Now, if this was your first time here, I would very much appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my future content. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in my next video.